All right, guys, welcome back. Today, what I really want to talk about is guitar amplification. So simulators for guitar amps. A couple of quick things we want to talk about when it comes to guitar amplifiers and just kind of what they do. So let's say perhaps you might want a an overdriven sound or perhaps even a clean sound, right? Uh, amplif amplification includes a couple of major things. Uh, tone control, so that would be such as, things such as, let's say, treble, mid, bass frequencies, of course, presence. Now, we're also looking at harmonics, so things like distortion, of course, that old, that, and uh, overdriven uh, qualities. Reverb, oftentimes, if the, if the amplifier does have some type of effect, it's going to have some type of reverb effect. Of course, other amplifiers, some more perhaps pricier amplifiers, will include other effects, uh, maybe some chorus type of effects, uh, maybe even some delays and things like that to go along with the reverb, okay? So... Some of the major types of amps you want to look at would be tube amps, or sometimes they're also called valve amps. I guess it really just depends on the part of the in the, uh, the part of the world that you live in, or where you're shopping. Let's say, okay, uh, tube amps are typically warmer, and they distort with more aggression and louder playing. Okay, um, they're warmer. Like I said, they're even older. They're the oldest type of amps that we have, so therefore they're oftentimes heavier. And those valves or those tubes that heat up, they deal with thermoionic emissions. So what that does is essentially a cathode is heated to allow electrons to escape and essentially move freely within that vacuum, which creates that electrical current, okay? So valves or these tubes essentially will have to be replaced over time. So yes, we may love that, that classic quality of those warmer amps, but they may be heavier, they may even be pricier at this point, and, um, you know, maybe not as convenient as the next, which we will talk about solid state amps, which are, which work with transistors, and they can be louder, but also lighter and more portable. Not necessarily better, because, you know, a lot of the amps, the solid state amps can replicate some of those uh, tube valve slash valve amplifier styles, but you're not going to get that exact same warmth from a solid state. It's just just what it is, right? It doesn't have that warmth of those tubes uh, and that, you know, that actual warmth flowing through uh, the system. So another type we'll look at is also modeling amps. So these are much more diverse, of course, newer styles. Uh, they allow for a wider range of sounds and oftentimes they have a multitude of effects built in. So let's just look at some of uh, this little um, guitar loop that I have going and it's got an amp on it right now. And so, and the thing is, it doesn't really have a real amp sim on it. What I, what I did was create an amp okay i created an amp sim here using some of the basic effects some of them within fl studio mobile here are i mean as a matter of fact all of them are just more or less stock sounds that you're going to get okay let's run that going straight through the raw sound so let's check this out just raw okay that's just raw no effects Okay, just a quick, <laughs> just some single notes, some chords. Now, I want to say this as well. If you if you go out and actually sample somebody a guitar, you're gonna get much of a richer experience than the demo that I'm giving. But this is how I would create at least one way that I would create a guitar sim a guitar amp simulator. So let's go to this particular track right here and we'll just quickly look at what I added. So from the very top you'll see and right now again this is the untreated audio. We'll just let this run for now, okay? As a matter of fact, we'll switch to the other one. Okay, and let's keep it to the raw just just for now and let's go to the amp. So what I did was I added first of all some amplification, some control, a little bit of dynamic control with the compression as well as some additional gain in some cases okay i also use a variety of of distortions as you see here some some tube distortion some more clipping some soft distortion models over here as you see right here okay and varying degrees of that distortion as well as my favorite some panning for some of them i actually even adjusted the wet dry which you'll see in this other one over here i adjusted some wet dry let's say oh the gain sorry pardon me i adjusted the gain levels because i i didn't want them to to drive too much now additionally i looked at some ways to get a little bit more width 
So I added some chorus to this, okay? A little bit of width, a little bit of movement, as you see. So there's chorus added to this chain as well. And then, of course, when we're talking about tone, okay? Because amplifiers often do create some tone. We added some EQ. So I used the parametric EQ. I, I boosted a bit of the highs. I boosted a bit of the higher mid. I did a lot of boosting here and there. Really, some of these uh, amplifiers may only have three bands. Uh, per, for this one, I, I did four. Maybe the higher one is a little bit of presence, and then we got the, the low, mid, high-ish ranges, as you see, one, two, and three right here. And then, on top of that, the last two features that I added, and of course, guys, you can add amplif- you can treat this as you want, to get the sound that you want, but I added a bit of reverb, because oftentimes, like I said, that reverb is oftentimes one of the you know, the, the main effects that you're going to get. Sometimes you get a little chorus, sometimes you get some reverb, sometimes you get some delay. So I added reverb just to keep it more or less a basic um, amplifier type of sound. And then to cap it off, finally, I added an, a leveler. So that way we can adjust the overall volume level as it comes out, because as it drives deeper, of course, those levels could get a little bit too intense. So let's switch this over to the current amp setting and you guys can take a listen okay so you'll notice that the frequency is a little a little more full since we've got that um those boosts in these ranges right we've got some boosted signals in there okay we got these this distortion going on and we got a little reverb to help it ring out okay Let's switch over to the other sound here. So let's go like this. Super simple. Let's go back here and... Okay, so let's see what we can do. Okay. Maybe bring a little bit more. Now let's switch that back over to the untreated audio right here. Just straight through the master, no amplification. Pretty dry and pretty plain, right? Let's listen. Again, pretty dry. Let's try that one more time with that amplification on. Whew, let's here we go. You can hear some more width in there. Okay. A little bit of reverb in there as well. Okay. And let's dive a little deeper here. Let's turn that modulation down a bit. Okay. Let's go back to this top one here. And let's go ahead and, as we see, we've got that engaged. Okay. Let's see if we can boost some of these signals just to, just to see what we're doing here. Okay. So guys, I just want to show you this. There are so many ways that you can go ahead and take advantage of this effect, creating your own effect chains. I think it's, I want to say it's really simple, but, and there's no right or wrong way to do this. I would just say the main things to focus on when you're creating your own effects chain and you're creating your own uh, amplification simulator, let's say, I would look at a few quick things. Again, we want to go with the tone, boosting some of the lows, boosting some of the mids and some of the highs and try to get that presence in there. We also want to look at some harmonics. So something like distortion, right? Mm -hmm. Distortion qualities, whether it be tube or uh, clip or, or high or mid, as you see, right? Sorry, soft is the other one. And of course, some reverb. You can do whatever kind of reverb you want. The beauty of the reverb, let's dive into that very quickly. The beauty of the reverb is that you have the reverb one, you have reverb two, but you also have reverb right here within the multi effects, right? So I personally, for this one, I did multi effects because I wanted to kind of emulate a little bit of a spring type of reverb, but not exactly. I just wanted to get something that has more of a rhythmic effect. So I use this, the quickest um, reverberation setting here to create a little bit of that, you know, let's say spring effect, which is not entirely that. And then of course you can also consider using some other effects, right? So guys, thank you so much for checking this one out. I hope you enjoy this. I hope you learned something. 
Guys, winning with blends as usual. Justin blends back again, dropping some more FL Studio Mobile uh, tutorials and just goodness, guys. Enjoy yourselves. Let's get into this guitar amp simulators. All right. Check the comments, guys. Leave a comment and check the description and uh, give a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel if it's your first time here. Why not? All right, guys, take it easy and thank you for your time. All right. Until next time, take it easy. All right. Nice. All right, later. <laughs>